Another cold front has hit the mother city. This time it's caused flooding outside a petrol garage in Edgemeet in the northern suburbs. As you can see behind me, it's definitely a no-go zone at this stage. Flooding's been reported in several other areas, including Brackenfall, Balville, Goodwood and Kells River. Joining me now from Cape Town is journalist Graham Robbenheimer. Welcome back to the show, Graham. Glad you were able to join us again. You were the one that first alerted us to this problem, but now it's got worse. Uh, I understand you have new restrictions on water use uh, in place as of yesterday, I believe. Um, how are people handling cutting back their water use even more? That's correct, Terry. Uh, a very good afternoon to you, and thanks for having me on yet again. That's correct. We had um, new Level 6B water restrictions come into effect for the city of Cape Town just yesterday. And along with that, Terry, brings new punitive water tariffs against the city's worst water guzzlers. Uh, so people who use a lot of water are now going to be paying almost double, uh, double and even more uh, for their water bills every month. And this is part of a measure from the city to drive down consumption uh, as this drought really is now starting to get worse. It's become a familiar sight on Cape Town's coastline, but now it's time to say goodbye to the Sealy One. The Turkish bulk area ran aground amid stormy conditions in 2009. It's been a headache for the city of Cape Town, as it resulted in at least two separate oil spills. The city has enlisted the help of several organizations, including the South African Navy, to weaken the wreck with the use of explosives. It was along this stretch of road that the hijackers stopped. They shot Annie once in the neck. What I did is I did a simple fact check of the historical part of this Cape Town councillor. His name is, he's an opposition councillor, so he's, he's um, not part of the majority party, the uh, Democratic Alliance. He's in fact the in the opposition benches. He's uh, an ACDP councillor, the African Christian Democratic Party. He's a man called Grant Haskin. And he came out last year, Terry, saying that, uh, claiming rather that the uh, city of Cape Town had 15 years or more to avert the current crisis that we find ourselves in. I did a very simple fact checking of that. And uh, I asked him for his documents to, you know, what he used to support his claim. And I actually found out in the end, uh, Terry, uh, that um, there is proof or intelligence that was handed to the city of Cape Town in 2001 that says, A, Cape Town and the Western Cape and South Africa at large, if you will, is a general, uh, general regional water scarce, a scarcity region. And that measures had to be put in place to look at other alternative water uses and water sources. Um, and that the city really needed to put plans in place uh, to ensure that we don't find ourselves in the situation that we're in today. But of course, what happened along those 16 years would need to be judged on a case by case basis. Whether Sri and Devani was the mastermind of the 2010 crime, as the state alleges, is a matter for South Africa's courts to decide. Graham Robenheimer, Eyewitness News.